Now, without any further ado, I would like to welcome back an old colleague and uh, a, a man who's well familiar to many of you out there, none other than David Curtin. Uh, David is the Heritage Party leader, and in his own words, he's a writer, a speaker, a political commentator, a Christian, amen, <laughs> social conservative, pro-freedom, pro-family, pro-nation, pro-life. You don't believe in uh, hiding your light under a bushel there, David. Nice to get what you're all about out there so people know where they stand. Hi, thanks. Thanks, Rick. Uh, really good to join you again on your show. I think it's been a while since I was on your show. Um, did my show for a while. And then uh, here we are again. So uh, great to be back. Yeah, I, I think you've, you've read off my um, profile mm -hmm. on X and Facebook and other social media platforms. Yeah, I mean, I, you've got to say what you stand for, I think, these days. I mean, yeah. the, the enemy, what I would call the enemy, the cultural Marxist, you know, those who are uh, trying to ruin our nation, they, they have no problem with like saying what they stand for um but they also say oh well if you're a christian be quiet can't have you know god or christianity in politics but if you're a muslim like sadiq khan that's fine if you're a hindu that's fine if you're a jew that's fine but you shut up if you're a christian i say no you know we should say i'm i'm christian i'm pro-life i'm pro-nation i'm for controlling our borders i'm for traditional family values yeah let, let's speak it out because that's what we need to restore in our nation and not just here but around the world as well let, let's be brutally honest about it too. No matter where anybody stands on religion, whether they're believers or not, or they're atheists or they're Buddhists or whatnot, since we slid away or fell away or plummeted away from old school, so-called traditional Christian values in our schools, the way we work, in our workplaces, the way we run our families, since that all went to the wayside, I don't care what anybody says, who can point to the world today? and say that since those things were abandoned or dropped or censored, that we've improved. Show me that we've improved, and I'll say, well, you were right then, but I can't see any signs of improvement anywhere, unless maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. Yeah, Rick, I mean, that is a really good point. That's a really good way of putting it. You can see that the decline in our nation, the decline in our health in our society in the way people behave it's just gone down and it, it correlates with um i think beginning in the 1960s especially mm. was a falling away from christianity and traditional christian principles if you like you know i mean i'm not saying you you know you have to be born again to be in politics but mm -hmm. we can see that as people have tried to replace christianity with something else i mean who knows we, we it's almost like we have these different religions now now, that you have to affirm, you have to affirm LGBTQAPP, whatever it is. You have to affirm net zero in this green ideology, which actually is about destroying our economy and bringing in control. It's about ruining our freedoms. Um, it, you know, you have to affirm critical race theory and Black Lives Matter and and everything that that uh, bashes our nation, uh, bashes white people in general, and says. Oh, no, there's nothing good about anything in the history of this country or any other country that has been white in the past. I mean, not not even, uh, you know, in the 18th century, abolishing slavery and going around the world as the British Royal Navy did and forced all the other countries around the world to abolish slavery as well. That, I mean, that is like, you know, they don't even uh, mention that as something that's good. So you're, you're required almost to affirm this anti-religion these days uh, and you know that that's obviously goes with the falling away of you know happiness joy um well-being in our society as well you know david uh let's we'll have to put the shoe on the other foot here as well because although since you rightly said all those things have ceased uh, you can track a falling away in society moral standards everything the way things are in schools the way things are in workplaces the way things are going politically it's just going towards and heading into the abyss there's just no two ways about it however let's also point that finger and shine that spotlight on the wickedness that's happening within the church, unchecked in many, many cases, or covered up in many, many cases, as we has as we have seen in the, the Justin, the latest, sorry, should I say, the latest mm -hmm. Justin Welby debacle, and he has actually resigned as per yesterday. So he's uh, finally done the right thing after 
huge pressure from so many people, including his own synod and the various bishops within the Church of England. He's finally thrown his uh, thrown the towel in. So I'm looking at the um, uh, re resignation letter yesterday. Uh, Having sought the gracious permission of His Majesty the King, I have designed to resign as the Archbishop of Canterbury. Maybe he should have said, "Having got down on my knees in contrition and repentance before Almighty God, I am stepping back from this position." God isn't mentioned here, by the way. He's scraping and bowing and suing his obedience to. The king, Charles, that's that says that sets the tone immediately. I'm sorry for getting a little bit hot under the collar here, but I ripped him to shreds yesterday in the show when somebody said maybe mm. that's why he resigned. But anyway, he waffles on, making excuses, talking about how it's terrible, and then at the end of it saying, if you or anyone is in contact with the affected by the publication of this report, reach out to the Church of England safeguarding people. Yeah, the same people that he and everybody else failed their victims for many, many years while they were being viciously assaulted by predators and sadists. What the hell's going on in the world at the minute that this man's heading up the Church of England? It is appalling, isn't it? And I, you know, I made a video about this and spoke about this yesterday when it happened. I think there's been increasing pressure on him to leave from all quarters of society. His position was completely untenable because he didn't do anything um, to bring this predator to justice. And you, this this guy, no, who he's dead now. He died in 2018. It was a uh, uh, found to have uh, abused many many boys and young men in the church you know in the 70s and 80s and you know so this is all about uh could justin Welby have done more he could have at least have reported this man to the police so they could have arrested him extradited him and uh put him in jail for what he'd done but he it seemed to uh not do that turn a blind eye when they all go on and on and on about safeguarding you know we safeguard everybody but then there's a real safeguarding issue and nothing is done about it so um you know the point i made yesterday when i was speaking about it is this isn't the only thing that he's done wrong. This isn't yeah. the only the only th reason why he was a bad Archbishop of Canterbury. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the thing that everyone's focused on now. But there's three other things that come to mind which stand mm -hmm. out. Number one is he started a fund of a hundred million pounds for slavery reparations mm -hmm. from the Church of England. I mean, why are we beating this drum again? You know, the, the Church of England needs to bow down and apologize for what happened 200, 300 years ago and give lots of money to people who are, you know, who are quite frankly, you know, not affected by slavery today because it was a long time ago. The other thing I think was really appalling, or one of the other things, was he encouraged people to get these experimental injections during the lockdown COVID era, even said Jesus would have taken a vaccine, which is complete nonsense, Ridiculous. absolute nonsense. I mean, Jesus is God. He didn't need a vaccine. There were no such things in those days. And, uh, you know, I, he, Jesus went and healed people. He didn't need, you know, big pharma to, to help him out with his <laughs> immune system. And the whole idea is, absolutely ludicrous. ridiculous um, that he was encouraging people to do that and then there was a specific case of bernard randall you might have heard of him i think a mm. lot of people have heard of him he's a chaplain he was a chaplain in a school in mm -hmm. derbyshire he gave a sermon saying that everyone has the right to criticize lgbt ideology and to criticize people who are uh, trying to go into schools and teach toddlers um, that, that they are non-binary, which is, again, that's anti-Christian. And he's saying that you're, if you're a Christian, you have the right to stand up for what's in the Bible. Well, this chaplain, Bernard Randall, as we know, he was fired from his job and he was blacklisted uh, from being a chaplain and from working in the Church of England by his bishop, the first female bishop in the Church of England, who's the Bishop of Derby. I can't, her name escapes me just now. But he, he appealed... He wrote to Justin Welby to say, can I appeal against this to clear my name? And, and Justin Welby blocked that. So here's a man whose life has been ruined um, for standing up for traditional family values. Um, and uh, he was basically thrown out of his position in the church. And Welby said, you know, 
you know, I'm not going to support you. Uh, and I think that's deplorable, you know, mm -hmm. because this is really continuing the ruin of a good Christian man who was a chaplain who mm -hmm. stood up for biblical Christian traditional values. Uh, mm -hmm. So there, there's a whole range of reasons yeah. why Justin Welby was a terrible archbishop, not just the thing which we're hearing at the moment in the news. Bad enough, though, that is. There are many other things as well. So it's very, very good that he's gone. And I hope that the next archbishop is someone who's going to be a real, true, fiery Christian who will stand on the word of God and and lead the country back to to Christianity, to Christ. Because all the way I've had, I've, you know, I've known four archbishops in my lifetime, and they've all been woolly, wishy washy, you know, no men, you know, not not standing yeah. for any principles. We need someone, you, you know, we need to get out of this era of the blind leading the blind mm. and get back to someone who is like Archbishop Cranmer, uh, you know, back in the day, or John Knox or someone who is going to be a real proper Christian standing up for true Christian values. That's what we need, not someone who's wishy-washy and is going to be think, all woke. You think, I'm sure the Church of England are listening into this because obviously after they heard my rant yesterday, they, you know, will be, will be resigned. So do you think maybe uh, you or I could maybe get a phone call or an email after this uh, conversation this morning and say, hey, David, how about you? Would you like the job? Or maybe even me uh, at a long <laughs> shot. Could you see me uh, as the next Archbishop of Canterbury, could you? <laughs> I think you'd be great. <laughs> let's, let, let's have you as the Archbishop of Canterbury. I tell you what. Now. I tell you what, we the first thing we'll be doing, that. we'll be turning over those tables and making a scourge of small cords and whipping the money changers and the thieves and the merchandisers out of the church and getting it back to a house of prayer, not a house of merchandise, because that is what it has become. Simple, isn't it? So, so simple, but we've come so, so far away from it. So when I was saying about falling away from Christian values, I wasn't just referring to the outside world, if anyone has fallen, no one has fallen more so than the so-called established church. And I have to, uh, you know, have to call a spade a spade when it comes to that too. And Welby is a perfect example of that. Whew. But anyway, uh, that takes us perfectly up to our uh, little headline break. Only 30 seconds and then we're going to get back into it. You can tell us what you've been up to uh, with the Heritage Party and what the future is for you guys, because I know you've been working tirelessly on campaigning and uh, establishing your base. So we'll turn the spotlight on you, David, and what you're up to right. uh, when we come back here on The Pulse Dot today. Free speech is alive and well on today's news talk, The Pulse. For The Pulse, this is James O'Neill. Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, announced his resignation amid accusations that the Church of England covered up child sex abuse by John Smythe QC, who led summer camps in the 1970s and 80s. A tragic accident involving a Tesla Model Y in Toronto resulted in the deaths of four young friends who were trapped inside the burning vehicle after it crashed into a guardrail. President-elect Donald Trump named Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy to lead the new Department of Government Efficiency. Telling it as it is. Today's News Talk. The Pulse. Okay, uh, David is the chairman of the Heritage Party, and in case I forget to do it before we finish this little segment, uh, please go and follow him, number one, on Twitter or X, at David Curtin, spelled K-U-R-T-E-N, not C-E-R-T-A-I-N, Curtin, David Curtin, and also check out the Heritage Party's website, which is heritageparty.org, real simple. Get on there and see what they're about. And just plucking the first thing that I'm looking at here this morning uh, off your timeline here, you stand for a lot of great things. Let's focus in on farmers. Heritage Party will protect our farms from destructive taxes and Agenda 2030. Join the Heritage Party to fight against the globalist war on farms. That's a big one at the minute. Tacking the food supply, that's about as treacherous an act as you could have. Yeah, it, it's dreadful. And it's been brought into focus here in the UK because of this inheritance tax raid, which is going to destroy 70,000 farms when family farms, when, you know, someone dies and they want to hand the farm on to their mm -hmm. children, like has happened uh, down the generations for centuries. I mean, th this is not something that it's, um, you know, just a, a, a bit of a uh, mistake. This is a de deliberate demolition of farms. You know, businesses are being hammered as well by the government that we got in at the moment on behalf of Agenda 2030, the World Economic Forum, and you no know, big uh, hedge funds and organizations that are ready to swoop in 
buy up land which farmers are forced to sell to pay their inheritance tax bills and put up wind turbines and solar panels and or turn them into uh, development estates for migrants to come in to continue the program of replacement migration. I mean, these things all go together. And we know what the plans of the globalists are. They hate our countries. They hate um, our society, our traditions, our way of life. And they, they don't want nations. They want states where you can be in one state this year and another state another year. And and you're just an individual atomized people with no connection to each other, no connection to the past, no connection to the future. This is what globalists want so they can keep you in a position and a state of complete control and subjugation. Uh, you know, and destroying wealth, destroying assets, destroying farms, destroying small businesses is one of the things that they are doing now with all of the different things that are coming in through government policy. I mean, we saw this. In the lockdown periods, you know, in the COVID era, where they said some small businesses have to close because they're deemed to be non-essential. I mean, who says? Who is to decide whether a business is essential or non-essential? But that's what they did. Uh, and hundreds of thousands of, of businesses, small businesses in particular, went uh, bankrupt. But the large global corporates, they were considered essential and they could carry on trading. And they swooped in and took up market share and uh, pillaged the assets and uh, the, the uh, operations of small businesses that were forced to close. So this is just a continuation of what they're doing in a different area, like trying to destroy small family farms um and uh, and this is this is absolutely dreadful you know it goes along with the net zero agenda as well um where farms are actually some of them are paid not to produce anything so a lot of farmers are, are saying well we're getting this money to not grow any food we're going to get paid by the government for one or two years more to not grow food than to grow food so therefore what do they do well they, you know they 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 don't grow anything because they're getting subsidies not to grow any food so this is setting us up for um a, a real you know possible squeeze in food supplies uh next year so it's very very worrying and um this government has got to go you know they need to be gone they, they because they're just absolutely dreadful and they are demolishing our economy at the moment and farms are uh are bearing the brunt of that david do you think this is a, also a multi-pronged attack when it comes to farmers because not just uh there's this inheritance tax uh, acts hanging over farms now if the farmer dies leaves it to the son farming has always been a family generation to generation business most often than not farmers inherit it from their fathers and mothers who inherited it from theirs and so on and they will pass it on to their children so it's almost like they want to break this generational business chain provision chain number one number two uh, they're attacking people financially and farmers are usually asset rich as in most of the value that they have is in their land and they do work hard to break even on a you know income basis so they're squeezing them even harder and they're out there you know genuinely you know from the crack of dawn most days until late night harvesting milking sowing and reaping doing the whole business mm -hmm. number three they're also attacking our food supply because if they don't own the farms anymore and multinationals come in or the government come in and start taking farmland or nefarious individuals like bill gates who's the biggest holder of agricultural land in america believe it or not he owns more farmland than anyone. You have to ask yourself the question, why? And we all know that if you can control a people's food supply, you control those people. Because if you have to do what you're told to get your daily bread, uh, you're going to do what you're told. Otherwise, you and your family are going to starve. So I can just see so many evil agendas going on in and around this topic. That's why I think you're right to highlight it and make such a big deal about it with what you're doing with the Heritage Party. Yeah, well, you, you're absolutely right, Rick. Everything is coalesce, coalescing together here around um, the attack on farms at the moment. And uh, as you say, Bill Gates has, owned, owned, has, has bought up huge amounts of farmland in the USA. Uh, BlackRock are economically annexing Ukraine. They've bought up rights to lots of farmland there that they're hoping to get their hands on 
after the Ukraine-Russia war ends, whenever it ends, I hope it ends soon. But in the UK now, we've got this attack on farms through inheritance tax, which is going to leave a lot of farmland, um, you know, open to uh, economic predators, if you like. And, and many of them want to completely change our diet, our food, in order to control us. They don't want us to have healthy foods, meat, and uh, you know, natural vegetables and fruit. They say it. I mean, the World Economic Forum is very open. They say in the future, meat will be a rare treat, you know, like <laughs> not a staple like it is today. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm fortunate. I mean, most of us are. I can, I can eat meat every day if I want to. But this, this globalists have got plans to stop us from eating meat. Uh, you, you know, except for maybe once every couple of months if we can afford it. And then, you know, that will be controlled through (laughs) central bank digital currencies and so on. Yeah, yeah. If your social credit score is good at Christmas, you might be allowed a family turkey, but you'll have to pull your points. You know, mom, dad, at the kids, granny and granddad, they'll all have to have good social credit scores. And maybe just maybe you can get yourself a nice leg of turkey and split it between yourselves with some, uh, you know, uh, synthetic uh, vegetables grown on the Bill Gates farm uh, funded by Monsanto. But it's listen, it, it sounds ludicrous. But that's the way they're trying to march us at the minute. But thankfully, there are people like yourself out there, and not just you, but the party that you're heading up, you're all of the same mindset and need to be, because a house united, you know, shall not stand, but divided they shall fall. We need to stay united. We need to keep pushing uh, against this horrific agenda, and that's what we shall continue to do. So, David, we're just about out of time. The time has flown by like a rocket directing people your way again at David Curtin. Follow him on X or Twitter. I don't use any other social media platforms, so that's the only one I know about. So at David Curtin on X or Twitter and the theheritageparty.org. If you like this guy, if you like what their party's about, join, join, subscribe, fund them. You don't have to be out there on the streets. Just support them if you can uh, and you feel inclined to do so. So David... Thank you for your, all your input this morning and your uh, enthusiasm and uh, yeah, your 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 uh, optimism, uh, despite the fact that all around us seems to be going to the dogs. It's good. And that's what people need to hear right now. So thank you so much, my friend. And I hope you have a great day wherever you're off today. Uh, so that's thanks, Rick. Curtain. No problem. You're welcome. Got to take a pause right now. 